Look closely at some of the new e-bikes being released for 2023 and you might notice something slightly different with the brakes. This is Bosch's new ABS system that's been designed from the ground up to work across a range of bikes from commuting to enduro bikes. Ever since I heard about the system, I've been really intrigued. But my big question is, is it just a safety feature or will it actually enhance performance riding off road down a mountain? Now we all know about ABS on cars, even many motorbikes use it. But e-bikes designed to go off-road, get loose, slip, slide and skid around? Is there any point? In this video, I want to find out. Is ABS on the e-bikes just about safety? Or are there enough performance gains to consider it an upgrade on your next bike? The test location? Verbier, in the Swiss Alps. Thousands of meters of loose technical terrain and a couple of different test bikes from Bosch with the system installed and plenty of tight twisty turns and a little bit of me daring to grab as much front brake as I can to really test the system. I can't tell you how unnatural it feels to grab a fistful of front brake heading into a berm, but I gave it a go. But first, let me explain in a bit more detail how the system works. The system is made up of a few parts. First, we've got wheel speed sensors on the front and rear rotors. These continuously monitor the rotational speeds of each wheel when riding. The Magura hydraulic brakes, which is a bespoke lever made for the system, and the ABS control unit, which is the heart of the e-bike system. To put it simply, when the system detects the front wheel is locking up, the ABS control unit reduces braking force in a fraction of a second. This prevents the front wheel from skidding and locking up. One of the most important things to cover actually is the ABS system is only on the front wheel. It's only active on the front, which is really where you want it. If you're locking up the front wheel, that usually means danger and you're gonna slide and probably crash. Locking up the rear wheel is actually something that we do on a lot of bike rides, so you're maybe skid in, you're locking it up to swing it into a corner, or there's loads of other instances where you actually want to get that back wheel to get loose. So the speed sensors exist on the front and the rear wheel, and that's only so the system knows if there's a variation in the wheel's speed. So if the front wheel is traveling slower than the rear wheel, the system knows it's about to lock up and then it will apply ABS to the front wheel. But the rear wheel remains just as we know and love. There's no ABS on that rear wheel. So the entire system is only 400 grams, which I think is pretty light for, for an ABS system on an electric mountain bike. And that comprises of the sensors and the hydraulic unit just in here. A couple of features, so the ring here, it's got a magnetic sensor. So if you get things like mud or dust or debris on it, it's not gonna give any false readings. And the pickup time is around three milliseconds. So that's how quickly it can sense a variation in the wheel speed, which is probably much quicker than the human can control their finger. The system itself has a couple of configurations. So it's got a road setting and a trail setting, and that controls the way that the software controls the ABS. So on the trails, you get a little bit more slip for more deceleration. My first test, pull the front brake as hard as I can on a steep, loose descent. Something that you would never normally do, as it's pretty stupid, but let's see what happens. In this super slow motion clip, slowed down eight times, you can see that the front wheel digs in to find traction. There's momentary lockups of the front wheel that if you look close enough, you can just about see. These lockups are completely unnoticeable in actual real pace riding. So it's fascinating to watch it back in super slow motion and see the ABS system working. Wow, that is insane. It slowed down progressively, but it kind of got to the point where if it gave me any more brake, it would have lost the front wheel. Had I've put more weight on the front, it would have applied a little bit more braking pressure. But when I got to this more grippy kind of hard pack is a little bit flatter here, it progressively applied more braking force and my bike came to a standstill much, much quicker. So as that wheel is digging down into the dirt and you get your weight over the front, there's more grip, so the system can actually apply more braking force. It is 
Really, really interesting to learn how this is working. Test number two, can a human outbreak it? ABS on versus ABS off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around 30 kilometers an hour and I'm just gonna panic brake, pull both brakes as hard as I can and my goal is to stop as, as fast as I can. And then I'll do it without ABS turned on. You can completely deactivate it on the system. So my brake in line is this little water bar here. I'll hit it at around 25, 30 kilometers an hour. I'll double check the speed's the same on both descents and yeah, we'll see how far the braking line is with ABS on first, and then we'll try it without. <laughs> you can't control the rear wheel lockup. It's you pull in the back brake, it's loose, it's just skidding. But the front, you can feel really dig in. And when you get your weight over it, you've just got massive braking force. Now, I'll put this little marker where my front wheel stopped. Let's give it another go, but with that ABS turned on. There is no way you can pull it and just, your fear is there for that front wheel locking up. I pulled it as far as I dare. I felt it get a little bit loose. And you can see there's about, well, at least a bike length of benefit from having ABS on this type of road. So I wanna try more to see if I can reduce that and get a little bit closer. That was me like going to 9.5 out of 10 in terms of what I think the grip limits are. Cannot beat that. I'm gonna turn the ABS on once more for a final test, to see if I can get that any shorter. <laughs> you can really slam on the anchors. And if you get your weight over the front, this tire just really digs in. It's a magic Mary, just bites into the dirt. So that stopping distance has been reduced even more by about another 80 centimeters. So ABS is just annihilating manual human braking. So I'm curious to find out actually, is it just a safety thing or is it gonna give me some performance benefits on some of these amazing trails in this bike park here? So my plan is to ride the trail just as I normally would, but maybe with a little bit more speed before I hit the corners and start braking hard before I go into those corners. I rode these trails trying to reset my expectations of ABS as purely a safety benefit for things like panic braking and tried to apply the technology to more of a performance bias. That being braking later into berms, using the front brake in the air when landing from a jump and being able to insta-brake, pulling the front brake over braking bumps and rock gardens. And the more I trusted it, I found the more I could get away with. And what I found was, on demand, I could apply 100% braking force 100% of the time, which, on the face of it, is a pretty incredible performance benefit. Oh man! <laughs> that is crazy! I've got to say, it's pretty incredible. You can give it an absolute fistful. You head into the dusty berms, grab the anchors and the bike just slows down. The rear wheel will skip around and slide just like normal, but this front just digs in. You can even give it front brake in corners. You can give it a little back brake as usual, but you can apply the front brake. Now, obviously that changes the balance of the bike a little bit, but it is interesting riding it down a trail. Now, I genuinely think that this bike is faster down a trail with ABS. Genuinely, I am actually pretty blown away with how it performs. Now, there'll be a load of folks who may be skeptical, just like I was about ABS on e-bikes. It's probably one of those systems that isn't for everybody. Personally, I love seeing technology evolve and only see this as a good thing, not just for the safety and performance benefits, but for bikes and the sport as a whole. The tide rises, technology matures and develops, and maybe this will pave the way for better biking for us all. I left the test thinking that I can already see further testing is required to fully work out if it's something I would actually spec on a bike myself. 
have found many scenarios where I think it would work brilliantly, such as rainy, cold UK winters, greasy wet routes and slick mud-ridden trails. And before I go, I must add that after two days riding an ABS-equipped bike, getting back onto a regular bike, my brain didn't quite reset. I had two front-wheel lockups getting back onto a regular bike, and I can't say it was a direct result of not having ABS, but certainly got me thinking. Thank you.